Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here in Adobe Photoshop. Wait a sec, oh, what are we looking at? Could this possibly be a live cast shadow? It is. I know, calm down, man, it's just a shadow, but I'm always excited to find better ways to do things in this program, and I think this is exactly that. After years of using the step and repeat method or actions to create shadows, with this approach we finally have the freedom to change the angle of a cast shadow, replace the source, go through different fonts, skew things, rotate things, and the crazy thing about it is it's such a simple solution, it just never occurred to me to do it this way. Let's get into Photoshop and check it out. All right, I'm here in Photoshop and I'm gonna use this text layer as the jumping off point. I also have a layer with some texture up here. Sometimes you put that in at the end, but hey, sometimes nice just to have a little bit of texture right out of the gate, just to give things a little bit of character, but the cast shadow effect. So this effect is basically gonna be one big hack of the drop shadow layer style effect. And rather than apply it directly to the text, I'm gonna drag the text into a group folder and apply the drop shadow effect to the folder. That's gonna give us a little bit more flexibility in the long run. So drop shadow, I'll reset it to default, bring the opacity up to 100, and take the size to zero for a nice crisp shadow. But to take this single shadow and convert it to a long continuous shadow, I'm gonna rely on two features of drop shadow that can sometimes go unnoticed. So the first thing is that you can have multiple instances of the drop shadow effect. So check this out. If I hit the plus button over here, I now have two drop shadows. As a matter of fact, any of these effects that have a plus button have this capacity to create multiple instances. But drop shadow number one at the bottom, I'm gonna bring the distance to one pixel. Drop shadow number two will be two pixels. I'll add another one, three pixels, another four pixels, and you can start to see the logic of this, and it's starting to make a little cast shadow. And since the angle of each of them is set to global light, I can change the angle and it changes all of them, but I'm gonna create seven, eight, nine, and I'm gonna stop at nine drop shadows. So if you're thinking, oh no, we're gonna make 300 copies of the drop shadow effect. No, don't worry. First of all, that would be a huge pain, but also 10 copies of an effect is the maximum. So actually, I'm gonna trash this 10th one. I've got nine drop shadows here. And while I'm here, I'm actually gonna give this a little bit of the bevel and emboss effect. That doesn't have anything to do with the cast shadow, but I think it'll be a nice addition to this effect. Anyways, nine drop shadows, I'm gonna hit okay. But we need the shadow to be much, much longer, right? So here's where we're gonna rely on another feature of layer style effects. I guess you could call it a feature, but it's kind of like a little trick to beat the system. What I'm gonna do is drop this group into another group folder. And here's a cool thing about group folders. With each folder, we basically get to start from scratch again with the layer style effects. So I'm gonna put a drop shadow on this one, but let's think about what values we need to put in here. Because initially we took this text and created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine drop shadows. But this new group folder is gonna take this entire shape and use it as the source of the drop shadow. So we're gonna start at a distance of 10, but then the next one will go to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And look at that, we've got a perfect cast shadow going here. Not only can I change the angle of the shadow, but this is still a live text layer down here. So we can experiment with different fonts, see how they look with a cast shadow. This layer can be scaled or skewed, rotated. In fact, rotating it and skewing it, you could even use this technique to suggest an extruded shape. But let's try taking this a step further. I'm gonna collapse down these effects and I'm gonna make a duplicate of this whole group. I'll put the duplicate on the bottom. And in this one, instead of text as the source, I'm gonna put two shape layers in here, two rectangles casting these shadows. So who's to say we can't just double down on the same technique? If I take this folder and nest it in yet another group, so the first folder was drop shadows with multiples of one, second group was multiples of 10, this group is gonna be multiples of 100. So drop shadow at 100, 200, 300, 400, 5, 6, 7, 8, 900. And if we need the cast shadow to go longer than that, we'll just group it again for multiples of 1,000. So 1,000, 2,000. And at this point, we're well off of the page and you get the point, cast shadows as long as you need them to be. Then here's a cool effect. I'm gonna duplicate this entire group with these rectangles in it, move this one to be on top of the text and bring the opacity down a little bit, then move the location of these shapes just a little bit, creating this illusion of depth where the shadows kind of hit the text in a different place. And with just the drop shadow effect here, we've got this really cool dimensional effect happening. We can move all this stuff around and adjust it as needed. 
All right, well, that's it for now. The new and improved cast shadow in Photoshop. I hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to the Texture Labs channel. Always more on the way. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.